mean or uh, expectation what you call it expectation of a random process we will try to find it out and uh, we will also find what is the variability so in order to represent variability uh, we simply uh, will not have variance kind of concept why because we are having a random process that means it is simply for layman way you can call it it is, it is a sequence of random variable where the uh, time index is talking talking about indexing and time index may be continuous may be discrete depends upon the choice and, and pro choice of problem okay so here what is happening that so we will come up with central representation as uh, we call it uh, mu or you can denote it uh, give suffix in order to relate it with the corresponding random process and definitely it would be a function of time and there would be no randomness here why because the randomness will be exhausted by finding mean of the corresponding random process so you have to find expectation on mean of the random process so here definitely we know that the randomness in the random process is not coming from t it is coming from the uh, outcome of the random process so if you want to get more visual of the mean of uh, uh, a random process so we, i had already given several representation of a random process so you can denote it by just uh, xt as just mimic the representation of a random variable otherwise you can uh, go associate with uh, the source of randomness that happens to be outcome and we denote it generally by omega okay and sometime omega is actually also talking about uh, angular frequency as well that time definitely i will mention that but right now here omega is talking about outcome and further finally it is defined as function of two function with two argument one argument is coming with respect to time that uh, evolutionary due to evolutionary nature of the random process another coming with respect to randomness or random nature of the experiment a random experiment so this one is overall representation of uh, one random process and several time i had already told that so um, best representation we go for this but we always remain uh, you can see that it is a little bit uh, what we call it indirect representation or uh, just it looks simple but explicitly implicit definition representation of uh, random process explicit is this one this is the explicit one so that's why if you are willing to find mean of a random process you have to find mean of xt but if you try to look it uh, definitely mean always we find when uh, we have to look the randomness within that random variable how it is coming so it is sources from the random out outcome okay so that's where we can write like this way. okay then we, we will able to see the source of randomness in the random process okay and then we will do the for each t fixed t this x happens to be xt happens to be a random variable and if it is a random variable we had already seen that how to compute pdf if it is continuous in nature then how we can find pdf and in order to compute uh, respective thing so we can do all those things so coming to outline of today's lecture uh, same concept i will talk about to, uh, first that how to define mean function better you can call it it is mean function it happens to be time function uh, with respect to index and after that we will define various notion of variability so here one notion of variability it will come autocorrelation one would be autocorrelation would come okay auto word is coming that in sense that we are dealing with a single random process and cross will come when we will have multiple random process so that's why auto word is not just it means simply that we dealing with same random process everyone might be aware with auto word so one would be auto correlation another would be auto covariance so we'll see those are talking about variability of the uh, random process okay so we'll measure that those things we will define also and also we will talk about estimation of those those one so we will talk about estimation of auto correlation and auto variance uh, covariance in a special case that a random process uh, where uh, what is that that one is a stationary in nature 
so what is meaning of a stationary in nature so here here what is happening that directly random process uh, that distribution of the random process um, if you are taking time sample of the random process then distribution that cdf would be what uh, it would be unaffected if you do uh, a lagging or shifting uh, a time shift okay time shift uh, so, so it would be uh, independent of that situation time shift it would be just uh, it would be independent of time just, just it depends upon that time shift okay so uh, due to that uh, both distribution would be same uh, such scenario stationary process that means uh, time shift it is coming like this way if you are shifting from t to t plus delta or capital delta also you can write and this one is a small delta and this one is the capital delta triangle shape we will say that so if you are shifting random process then correspondingly what random variable we will get um, uh, xt xt and here with respect to this time we will get xt plus delta so what is happening that both will have the same distribution both will have the same distribution xt and t plus t delta so that uh, both will have same distribution simply i would like to say that you will see that here uh, if that situation is there that then that uh, situation leads to a stationary process leads to in situation that you when you will compute in a stationary process that mean function when you will compute mean function for that uh, a stationary random process the mean function would be constant it is a fix okay and what is one other important result you will get is auto correlation generally we denote it by uh, rx and if you are taking any two time t1 t2 okay so simply we will give definition of all those things so it is happened to be auto correlation is defined as a expectation of for product of random variable x t1 and xt2 xt1 is the random variable that we are getting by fixing the time at t1 and this one we are getting by fixing time at t2 so this is the situation so here definitely if you try to look it just we are finding expectation with respect uh, to that randomness omega so omega will be adjusted definitely it remains function of t1 and t2 it looks like it is a joint function of t1 t2 but when you are dealing with a stationary process then you will see that the stationary process is no more function of t1 and t2 then what is that then in the case of a stationary process uh, the autocorrelation would be just function of difference between these two this time layer it would be just function of uh, we can denote it by uh, like this way we can call it r okay t2 minus t1 difference that means it is not bothering about t2 and t1 it is saying that if you are at t t1 after t1 how you are arriving at t2 how much distance you are how much uh, you travel from t1 to t2 so that travel is what the travel time is t2 minus t1 you can give name to this difference either call it tau in term of time okay or you can call it delta there is no any issue okay so it would be just function of the difference between uh, t1 and t2 so it would be just function of tau it is not function of t1 and t2 uh, just it is function of uh, tau the difference between these two that it affect that if you are at correct time t1 then how much you travel from t1 so that that is the ultimate aim in order to get uh, auto correlation in the stationary process so these two are very important segment in a stationary process if you are defining like this situation if distribution of uh, if you travel through this one then distribution of xt and distribution of uh, xt plus delta both are same this one is first order Essentially, process what we are calling it. Then second order, fourth, fourth order depends upon there are very NFL generally we will define nth order. Then we will discuss about. Two. So uh, we had already I have already told that one important parameter in the random process is coming mean function. Okay, mean function. Another you have already seen that autocorrelation function. 
then how we can estimate with given data just we will have a data uh, uh, along uh, one realization of the random process and uh, with respect to that time series that simply it would be time series data then with the help of time series data how we can estimate the mean function how we can estimate the auto correlation function so for general random process it is not possible but if you are having a stationary random process then we can estimate the mean and auto correlation with respect to given time series data so that time series data is very easy to record how that means you take a stop watch and suppose if you are willing to record time series data for simple pendulum then take a stop watch and just uh, uh, force uh, that uh, pendulum to move in a vertical plane and keep on uh, recording uh, angular displacement angular velocity angular acceleration whatever data you want to uh, record so with respect to different time frame you will be able to uh, record that data that uh, data of dynamics of the simple pendulum that means you are having a time series data so if you are having a time series data then from there how we can definitely some random process would be uh, associated with that so uh, how we can estimate the mean function and auto correlation function those things we'll discuss here in this lecture okay so coming to uh, uh, first that uh, uh, central representation prior to that in last lecture we had already discussed about distribution of a random variable for uh, fixed t so xt for fixed t xt happens to be a random variable and this just uh, i am trying to correct it the last result that i had taken a uh, sinusoidal signal with the, random amplitude the amplitude was random which is uh, distributed from minus 1 to 1 in uniform law using uniform law so question was that uh, you have to find the pdf of uh, x naught that means it is a random variable uh, at time t naught so so we had already seen that uh, several realization of the this random process definitely it is a random process with random amplitude so there are several realization we had already seen that i had also plotted the pdf of x naught that but here what was that situation so uh, i didn't discuss about uh, when uh, this x naught is zero it is zero constant so i had discussed about t naught is zero in that case cosine of 2 pi t naught uh, if t naught is zero cos then it becomes cos of zero cos of zero is taking one value so it is cos of zero one in that case x naught was just equal to what uh, if we if you are taking t naught equal to zero then in that case x naught would be omega times cosine of zero and what is the value of cosine of zero that one is equal to one so simply it is equal to omega so x naught is uh, here when t equal to zero then x naught is just a uniform random variable so easily we can find distribution of x naught in that case what would be we know that omega is uniform random variable it is observing value uniformly from minus interval uh, minus one to one so that's why x naught would have in uh, what would be? it would have the same uh, pdf what omega is having because x naught equal to omega so pdf of uh, the x naught in this case it would be just uh, equal to 1 by 2 when x is observing value from minus 1 to 1 and when x is observing value from minus 1 to 1 and otherwise it is 0 otherwise when x is not coming value from minus 1 to 1 then pdf would be zero no observation okay and now situation is another than uh, we haven't discussed when this uh, uh, x naught it becomes zero so when it becomes zero if you are taking t naught equal to pi by 4 then if you substitute here t naught equal to pi by 4 then we are getting cos pi by 2 so what is value of cos pi by 2 anyone would like to recall what is the value of cos pi by 2 anyone are you listening me zero okay so try to respond instantly these are very simple results just uh, okay so here cos uh, pi by 2 is equal to zero it simply says that in when t naught equal to pi by 4 in that case x naught is equal to zero so zero is it is a random variable it is observing value zero everywhere 
then except at a point uh, which is very big at that point so the, at zero okay so that uh, due to that we know that we had all i have already discussed several times uh, if you are taking a constant uh, a random variable which is constant almost throughout then what is the distribution what is the pdf of that it would be just uh, direct delta function direct delta function so when t not equal to uh, pi by 4 but if t not is not equal to pi by 4 in that case x naught would be omega times this constant tact cosine of non-random non uh, function so that's where here here randomness is just sources out from this amplitude red only so that's where uh, if we, here we know that uh, this omega is having uniform distribution from minus 1 to 1 so that's where x naught will also have uniform distribution just here the interval will be modified by this quantity okay so uh, so the x naught would be uniformly distributed in this interval so that we had already discussed and you can see the plot of that here so that that is the one correction what i did here i haven't uh, you know, computed uh, distribution of x naught for t not equal to pi by 4 so that's where i today i discussed that now we are going to main part of today's lecture that uh, mean central representation of the random process so we will introduce mean function we will introduce autocorrelation function we will introduce autocovariance function for a given random process so remember that random process everyone know that random process just takes in place one sinusoidal signal and there 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 are two things either you can take random amplitude or you can take uh, random phase so that one is the simplest example of for random process okay and signal always happens to be function of time so that signal uh, everywhere it arrives so there always you can come up with so let us discuss about that mean function very co that autocorrelation function autocovariance function for a, a random process so suppose so mean function generally i may take notation like this way but it is not a very fixed kind of notation you can take another notation simply you can call it a, you can give notation a suffix x for random corresponding random process and definitely it will be function of time so you can uh, put here t as an argument for that okay so and also we can define covariance variance function covariance function various things we can define it like this way for a given random process xt so what is the uh, uh, mean function so here we here assume that this random process is a uh, uh, continuous time continuous valued random process just to, for sake of simplicity because it is always easy to proceed with uh, integrals that's why we are taking it so in order to find uh, mean of uh, uh, random process so just uh, uh, here we uh, go time wise here time for each t for each t so just uh, for each t definitely uh, xt would be a uh, what uh, random variable so it will have a pdf and we will observing value x so this is the way to compute expectation or mean we know that from the definition of expectation so integrate this one get the expectation of uh, uh, xt for a fixed t and generalize for all t in that case it what it remain function of t so definitely the expectation would be function of t there would be no randomness randomness has been exhausted okay likewise also we can compute variance of a uh, random process so through this definition here simply uh, f of x t f of x with suffix x t it is a pdf of x t for a fixed t we know that that's uh, that uh, uh, for by fixing t you will get random variable and hence it will have a pdf because x is taking here value in a continuous fashion the state space happens to be a continuous state so that's way so here both uh, that mean function and variance function are deterministic function in time so because randomness has been exhausted so now it, there is no more randomness here so both happens to be just function of time simply you can say that and uh, trends in behavior of xt that means t evolves with respect to time so that uh, behavior you can directly get it from that trend trend how that uh, random process is uh, behaving with respect to time evolve with respect to time that trend at least you can get it from this uh, mean function and various function okay and the variance gives the spread so variance simply uh, trend you will get from uh, mean function and variance variability about the mean function that you will get uh, from 
this variance of uh, random process x okay that evolve with respect to time now we are coming to talk about uh, if you are taking two different time t1 and t2 then with respect to t1 you will getting one random variable x t1 and with respect to t2 you will get another random variable x t2 so you are you are having two random variables you have to talk about correlation and covariance as well so that's why if you are taking two different time t1 and t2 then you are getting two different random variable from the same random process so you will talk about correlation that correlation we are calling it auto correlation and we denote it by rx and it happens to be function of t1 and t2 why because randomness again it will be adjusted due to expectation or definition of auto correlation so we are calling it it is auto correlation auto word i told that it is coming from the same random process that's why we are calling it auto correlation okay of the random process okay and how we define the auto correlation it is the joint moment of x t1 and x t2 t1 remember that t1 t2 fixed time or are we just uh, sampling at time instant t1 and t2 we are sampling at time instant t1 and t2 that that's why we are getting x t1 and x t2 okay so how we compute uh, the autocorrelation uh, we compute it by finding expectation of product of these two okay product of the x t1 and x t2 expectation of product of this one so from the definition of expectation easily we can find it we know that t1 is x t1 is a random variable so definitely it, it would have a pdf and x t2 is also a random variable it will have pdf but we are uh, studying this one jointly okay so we need to come up with a joint distribution of uh, x t1 x t2 because i haven't mentioned that these are independent or dependent i haven't mentioned that so by default you have to uh, go with joint distribution of x t1 and x t2 so that's where this is the this f of x y it is a joint distribution of x t1 and t2 okay later if we, for simplicity we can put independent nature in order to compute this one otherwise we will apply uh, that multiplication rule okay likewise also we can uh, define auto covariance so what is auto covariance this is just generalization of variance of covariance so here uh, like uh, covariance how we define for any two random variable we it happens to be expectation of mean deviation of these two random variable so like here at time t1 you are getting a first random variable x t1 at time t2 you are getting a second random variable x t2 okay so we just deviate uh, these two random variable by the corresponding mean okay uh, corresponding mean so here this 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 mean you will get from the mean function it is just uh, what is happening it is the value of this mean function at time t1 and this is the value of mean function at time t2 that is the things okay okay and that you can compute uh, compute from here this definition you can compute taking t1 and just uh, taking same the pdf and you can compute uh, x mu x t2 and likewise also you can you can compute mu x t2 uh, t1 okay so this one is just definition of as usual uh, covariance okay and if you simplify it then it is just uh, the co auto covariance it is the difference of covariance auto -co correlation and product of corresponding mean function product of corresponding mean okay corresponding mean of x t1 and mix of x t2 okay and using again these two quantity auto correlation and auto covariance we can define uh, coefficient of correlation so that always happens to be if you are dealing with just uh, two random variable always we say that we divide the covariance with corresponding uh, standard deviation that happens to be a square root of the uh, variance so same concept is coming so here we are divided it is the variance of x t1 it is the variance of x t2 x t2 okay x t2 i can put it like this you can put it like this way there is no any issue so all these are uh, important concept in order to study centralized form of the uh, random process now we will compute all those things for the few specific uh, random process so simplest example again i will take example uh, of random process where the phase happens to be random in nature so we are taking continuous time continuous random variable where phase is distributed from minus 1 to uh, minus pi to pi in uniform way 
it is uh, theta uh, theta is the phase which is taking value in uniform way yeah, that means uniform law simply that means you know the distribution of theta what is that it is equal to 1 by 2 pi when x theta is taking value from minus pi to pi and outside that uh, theta is observing value uh, uh, 0 0 with uh, density 0 outside this interval so that is the theta the random phase and due to that we are getting a random process you can see that it evolves with respect to time what with random phase and if you are willing to find the mean of this random process you apply the same concept of the uh, things what we had already described here so we can easily find a mean of this one so for easily here uh, what would be just integrate the corresponding uh, random process okay from minus pi to pi integrate the and what it, it, it would observe the value zero easily we can find the expectation of this uh, random process it would be equal to zero likewise also if you are willing to find uh, if you are willing to find uh, autocorrelation so apply the same definition of autocorrelation and just here uh, it would be expectation of uh, what we call it uh, here we are not here we know that uh, sine this cosine function is periodic in nature so we are not going to find the mean throughout the interval complete interval we are just uh, taking periodic nature of that we are taking periodic nature of that so due to that uh, easily uh, integral will be uh, it will repeat this is uh, this kind of competition it will repeat due to periodic nature of the uh, this cosine function so that's why competition is very much easy in this case so if you are willing to find uh, autocorrelation function computation is very simple uh, just apply that uh, trigonometrical identity here product of uh, cost cosine t1 plus theta uh, theta it becomes in a small letter here it would be and uh, uh, here uh, what is that uh, you know that uh, all these are uh, computing of expectation and just you have to apply expected value rule and randomness is sourced out from this uh, uh, phase uh, that random phase so and we know the distribution of that one is 1 by 2 pi so that we, then we just uh, you can we know that uh, from the expected value rule so if uh, there is a function of random variable uh, x and uh, then what we do we have to just take distribution of uh, uh, x so better call it we are taking function of uh, suppose we are having a, a derived random variable call it uh, g of g of x so y is g of x so again i am recalling it all this so, so that you can understand again so all these things i have already discussed whenever there was a need so if you are willing to find expectation of y how you find it so we are not writing here y we are uh, we are writing here g of x in place of y and here in case of uh, distribution of y just we are taking distribution of x so that we had already discussed in expected value rule this is the expected value rule and we integrate it uh, from depends upon what is the domain so just i have i am not fixing that uh, taking that limit okay so likewise same case here it is coming here theta is uniformly distributed from minus pi to pi and we know that uh, pdf of that is 1 by 2 pi and outside that it is zeros that's where we just we have to uh, confine integral the inter the expectation process computation of expectation process the integrate integration will be confined to minus pi to pi that's where it is coming also beyond periodic it is just uh, talking about the nature of uh, random phase due to that integral this this is the simplified form of the integral and here it is uniform so this density is coming with respect to theta and that this one is borrowed product expected value rule simply i would like to call rule it is coming this one is also borrowed from expected value rule so here uh, here 1 by 2 pi is coming on uh, and uh, you might be aware of that here product of anyone would recall here here two what is the if you are taking two fun, product of two cosine function what is the product of two cosine function how, how we can write in form of summation anyone know probability uh, that this uh, trigonometrical identity how we can express this one in term of uh, sum of two cosine anyone how we can write cos cos of a into cos of b in term of sum of two cosine 
would like to recall that it is simply a static grammatical identity so it is just one by two of cosine uh, it will come as a cosine so anyone would like to answer it no what is the trigonometrical identity if you not try to answer it it would be something cos uh, a minus b and uh, uh, totally here cosine you know that uh, what is the formula of cos sine uh, of a plus b it is directly borrowed from here so cos a into b into cos a into cos b minus sin a into sin b likewise you can define cos cosine of a minus b uh, that would also involve cos product of uh, cos a and cos b and sin of a and b so you can realize all those things so from there it is coming that identity so just after simplification you are getting this form okay so here what is happening that if you integrate this one finally with respect to theta okay theta is random in nature so this after integration finally we are getting this output so easily we can see that here this uh, auto correlation function it is just function of difference of uh, t1 and t2 difference of t1 and t2 and we have already observed that mean function is zero due to that uh, the auto covariance would be also equal to auto correlation so one plot i have already taken so this one is the plot uh, with respect to so this one is negative t2 and this one is t1 so this line if you talk about uh, this just i have reverses the vertical line and horizontal line as is well t1 so what what are these line these line are talking about uh, t1 minus t2 t1 minus t2 and uh, this straight line t1 equal to some constant you can say that some constant so simply you can say that with respect to this constant we are getting uh, these value of uh, realization of autocorrelation autocorrelation these are the autocorrelation okay so here we can get it this is the plot of autocorrelation i would like to say that plot it, it is again cosine signal we observe that it is cosine function of the difference between these two that uh, we try to come up with uh, that uh, this isotropic uh, line we simply say that uh, this isotropic line with respect to that we are finding autocorrelation and auto correlation is equal to auto co covariance why because mean happens to be zero so that's where we can get to, to compute auto correlation and auto covariance both for the given random process okay now we will talk about uh, very interesting kind of uh, random process that happens to be a stationary random process as i have already mentioned that uh, what is the uh, requirement of being a stationary random process generally one requirement requirement is that here mean function would be constant mean function of the random process it would be constant it would be time independent simply constant and second requirement is that uh, that uh, auto correlation function it would be the function of if you are taking uh, uh, time sampling at two time instant t1 and t2 t1 and t2 then it would be just function of difference of these two it it would be just not function of t1 and t2 it would be function of difference of these two simply you can uh, simplify it like this way t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1 there is no any so whatever uh, approach is there you can proceed with that t1 minus t2 so that is uh, that along those uh, what we call it uh, uh, isotropic line what uh, i had plotted in last example so these two are important requirement for being a stationary process so we will define first what is the stationary process so, so there are two different approach to come up with a stationary process one is a strict or a strong stationary process another one is weaker version so what is the a strong stationary process so uh, for being as uh, if you are having a random process xt then we will say that it is nth order stationary if if we allow a time shift in that n sample instant sample instant t1 t2 t, uh, t1 that means uh, we are uh, shifting t1 to t plus tau or t plus delta and t2 to t plus each member of that sample instant we are shifting it 
heat observation of the sample assay we are shifting by tau and this tn we are shifting it by tau then uh, due to that shift it is not changing the uh, statistical property of n sample n n time sample that these two these n random variable it is not changing the uh, property uh, statistical properties of those so statistical property it is borrowed from where it is borrowed from distribution function of this uh, n n time sample or n random variable or simply also you can say that it is a random vector with uh, n number of component each component happens to be a, a random variable okay so more explicitly for it for a tau shift tau time shift in a uh, n sample instant that you always because we know that a random process it is a sequence of random variable it is involving various random variable with respect to variability of time so that's where just we have to proceed with uh, that a specification of random process uh, i had already discussed that you have to come up with a sample instant then with respect to that you will get a random variable sample random so that we are calling it n time sample and hence if you all you you have to study those things jointly so and hence you will get a random vector of dimension n random vector so that's where this is the this is the random vector simply you can simply for simplicity you can say that so here if you are uh, doing a time shift in the n sample instant then due to that time shift distribution is not going to change for that n time sample or this uh, uh, n dimensional random vector it is not so both this and this random vector will have the same distribution function okay so here distribution, so this is a more explicit way mathematically we can say that both distribution are same here you can say that here both joint distribution are same uh, in two different time sample but two different time sample are how we are getting it we are getting it by just a time shift it is not like that randomly we are taking two time uh, two n time sample or time uh, n sample instant in a, a arbitrary way we are not taking arbitrary way it, 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 there is a dependency so definitely in that case we see that distribution is both distribution and joint distribution function are equal so that is the uh, requirement for being a strong statistical process okay so as a result parameter parameters such as mean function and variance function and autocorrelation they exist also do not change over time this, those are directly not function of time or position if uh, you, you deal with in place of uh, uh, evolution with respect to time in place of uh, time temporal you can go for a spatial uh, evolution as well in that case uh, position is coming otherwise time just it would be so a random process is uh, further uh, uh, generalization of this one a strong and uh, process is we are calling it white sense or weak sense aesthetic process if we are ha having the following uh, two properties first one is simply we say that the mean of random process it is constant mu it is not independent of t it is just a constant and another requirement of that what is that the mean the autocorrelation it is just a function of difference between these two time t1 and two, difference between these two time t1 and t2 so again that at t1 t2 it is not like always we are taking uh, uh, fix t1 and t2 so it depends upon it it is one sampling approach through sampling approach we want to proceed with a it is uh, totally based on sampling what we want to take okay so here further i will discuss about uh, weak sense assessment process what does it talk about so it is talking about that uh, there are various results here you can see it here all this derivation is also coming here so a random process uh, is a uh, weak or uh, wide sense assessment process if we are having the following properties hold okay uh, these are the characterization simply i would like to say that characterization of uh, uh, random process uh, weak uh, wss ws weak sense uh, assessment process so mean must be constant and the autocorrelation would be just function of the difference between those two sample time okay, sample time or sample instant t1 and t2 difference between those it depends upon that it is not like that it would be function of t1 it, it would be function of that how much you go away from t1 once you are at t1 from there it, it matters from t1 how much uh, time you are taking to go t2 so that is the difference is coming here 
okay so now we are, we are have it is one kind of invariance principle also we can say that time invariant uh, time invariant principle so in lti uh, linear time invariant uh, system you might have already seen in control system someone might have already explained what is the meaning of time invariance so same concept is coming also here so if you are having a uh, assembly process then we can save for get following result easily okay so what are those so simply if you are taking uh, time t at time t yeah, and you are defining uh, auto correlation for that fixed time t then you will get a random, random variable xt and the auto correlation would be just expectation of uh, uh, or what it is just second moment of xt second moment of xt what we call it and if you simplify it uh, if you go to talk about definition of that then it will be due to that accessory nature the autocorrelation would be just uh, it would be function of t minus t t minus t is what zero and hence we are getting what r rx zero autocorrelation at zero we are computing so here it is having a name what we call it we call it average power of the process it is the power of process or uh, simply average power of the process another if you just uh, uh, take tau you define that shift from t1 to t2 you define it t2 minus t1 then in that case simply we can write the autocorrelation function at t1 t2 it would be just a function of the difference between these two okay and it is having maxima at zero it is having maxima at zero and that result also it can be proved easily uh, proof uh, i have explained i think uh, uh, you can see the proof of this one is very simple and uh, prior to give proof of this one i will talk about uh, this probabilistic inequality so it is directly borrowed from chebyshev inequality easily you can say that so here we know that uh, if you are taking uh, probability that uh, modulus of this one is uh, greater than or equal to tau so it would be bounded by from it is directly coming from chebyshev inequality you can verify it from there so it would be bounded by uh, this uh, this probability actually equal to in chebyshev proof of the chebyshev inequality you, you might have already seen that we know that uh, a square of uh, modulus happens to be equal to a square of that quantity so the, that principle we are applying here so here it will talk about uh, a square of uh, if you do a squaring both side t minus x of t t plus tau minus xt would be greater than equal to epsilon square so do this probability would be equal to this one and here you can apply chebyshev inequality so this bound you are getting with respect to chebyshev inequality and just simplify it all these after simplification what we are getting this bound this is the upper bound of this one same what i have already written here okay so i will take another example here uh, here i will say that this if you are taking a, a sinusoidal signal where the amplitude happens to be random in nature which is uniformly distributed from minus 1 to 1 then this one would be not a assertive process why uh, we can compute here mean easily mean we can compute that happens to be zero but if you are willing to compute auto covariance auto correlation or auto covariance because both would be same here so if you are computing auto correlation then it would be function of simply t1 and t2 we are not getting difference we know that uh, randomness is sources out from uh, a only so that's why we are getting a square what is the variance of a square from because it is uniformly distributed so we can easily uh, compute uh, uh, the variance of uh, a square so this one would be just equal to variance of because mean is zero we have already seen that so it would be equal to variance of uh, a and how we can compute it would be the a square of difference between these two divided by 12 so a square of uh, difference between these two is 2 and uh, a square of 2 is 4 and divided by 12 that means variance of this uh, uh, random amplitude a is 1 by 3 that easily we got it but but again what we see we are seeing here auto correlation happens to be function of t1 and t2 it is not like difference between this one so simply we can't act, uh, express simply in difference like it definitely it is function of t1 and t2 so in that case uh, in the first look it doesn't look like uh, uh, a stationary process because here fine mean is zero there is, uh, that means it is a zero always happens to be a constant it is constant but uh, we can't say much about uh, auto correlation so here it is uh, even directly uh, we uh, if you apply trigonometrical identity we can see that uh, difference factor t1 minus t2 factor we can observe that through uh, 
trigonometrical identity but apart from that there would be one more two more factor what would be that would be t1 plus t2 as well so so that's where it is uh, uh, something more than uh, it is not a stationary what is it is a cyclo stationary due to periodic nature periodic nature of this signal okay so it is cyclo stationary it is not a stationary but it is cyclo stationary so uh, you may raise a question can we convert this random process into a stationary process yes we can convert how if you are taking a random phase so here in this signal if you introduce a random phase in that case due to random phase that we had already seen that uh, one example in case of random phase uh, that uh, mean was zero also uh, the autocorrelation was just function of uh, cosine of uh, t2 minus t1 or t1 minus t2 so that's where from there we can easily conclude that this would be a yeah, stationary process this xt is not a stationary process but yt is a stationary process okay how huh? we can compute the uh, mean mean function of this one is easily we can compute it, it would be equal to zero we know that uh, expectation always uh, what uh, uh, it can be interchangeable inter interchangeable with continuous function that's where we have taken this approach so easily we can find mean of the uh, this random process yt yt you can call it here it would be yt yt it would be zero and autocorrelation of expectation function is it is just function of so we know that covariance that variance of a square we have already calculated it is one by three so that one is constant there is no any issue but here it is function of not it is not function of directly t1 and t2 it is function of difference between these two so easily we can say that uh, this random process yt it is what it is a stationary process but this one is not a, a stationary process okay and so also we can compute uh, co auto covariance as well so it is because of zero mean easily auto covariance function would be equal to uh, auto correlation so uh, in next class we will talk about so all these are concepts so three concept for central representation and variability we have introduced three concept one that mean function another we had introduced autocorrelation function and we computed various autocorrelation function and also we had introduced uh, auto covariance function okay at two time instant t1 and t2 so we had already seen that okay and these things so now our next concept is that these are definitely parameter of uh, a random process okay so we need to estimate this one so if you are having a time series data how we can estimate so these are the parameters so we need to talk about estimation of this one like uh, what we had already uh, discussed about that sample during sample statistics sample mean was what it is giving one estimate of uh, true mean and it converges in probability to true mean that can that uh, large sample approach sample theory in uh, uh, we had already seen that okay also uh, we had already seen that sample covariance so sample covariance it is converging to uh, true covariance sigma square uh, in large sample theory when n, n is approaching to infinity so we can put it here n is sample size here sub in sub n sample size when n goes to infinity n goes to infinity so we had already discussed all these things okay okay so same concept we will try, try to talk about uh, try to come up with uh, with respect to time series data we will have a time series data from the uh, random process and from there we try to estimate this quantity how we can estimate this quantity so we will talk about estimation in next class okay regarding attendance just put your roll number there